local news at 6 o'clock today is POW MIA Recognition Day. Our cover story is a look at today's ceremonies. But first, it's time for Live at 5 on the Road tonight with Bill and Linda. Hi, Tom. Coming next, Live at 5 on the Road from Decatur County, you'll meet the people of Greensburg and learn of the quality of life here. Plus, a small town shop has ties to some of the country's biggest cities. You'll see how business keeps rolling with the times. And look at the sunshine. Bob Gregory is here to tell us if it will stay with us. And Daryl Burnett has all the sports for Central Indiana. It's all coming next on Live at 5 on the road from Greensburg. Join us. Live from the heart of Decatur County, it's Live at 5 on the road from Greensburg with Bill Gephardt, Kim Hood, Bob Gregory's exclusive AccuWeather, and Daryl Burnett Sports. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Live at 5. Kim Hood has the day off, and Linda Ellsroth joins us now. Welcome to Live at 5 on the road. We're in Greensburg today. We're at the Courthouse Square here. This is their annual fall festival. And you'll see the people and places in this southern Indiana town that make it so special. Greensburg is nestled midway between Indianapolis and Cincinnati in southern Decatur County. With a population of just under 10,000, Greensburg, the largest town in the county, serves as county seat. Greensburg's patriotic roots go way back. In 1949, the town was recognized by the National Junior Chamber of Commerce as the city of democracy. The chamber delegates deemed Greensburg a model small town that they believe truly demonstrated the American way of life. But the most famous roots in Greensburg are those of the courthouse tower tree. In 1870, the first large tooth aspen was noticed sprouting from the courthouse tower. And since then, there have been one or more trees growing from the tower. That's how Greensburg got the nickname, the Tree City. And you'll be seeing more of Greensburg later in the show, but right now, let's go back to the News Center for a look at the news of the day with Julie Carey. Julie? Julie, you know, progress is not new to Greensburg, but when I sat down at a coffee shop right around where we're sitting now and talked progress over with some of the people who've lived their whole lives in this town, I found out progress has not always come easy here. Story's Restaurant is a busy place in the morning. Townspeople from all over trade news and gossip of the town. Regulars are historian Dale Myers, Dennis Dullenty, and Howard Maldon. They tell me their town used to be all farming, and then in the 40s, along came industry. Yes, and it changed the way people lived. They had a little more money to spend. It just turned, turned the town around. We used to have a section of town here called Irish Town, which was uh, down south of the railroad. And uh, with little, I won't call them shanties, but very, very ordinary little homes. Those people are all living like the rest of the town now. They've fixed up their houses. They have modern conveniences. That's absolutely right. And then with the increase in the job market and everything, why, you know, every, everybody profited greatly from it. But socially, progress changed Greensburg from what used to be a Saturday night town. Everybody came to town. The townspeople would bring their cars down and park them on the public square and to see the people walking around the square. And the, and the country people came in and did their trading. On Saturday night, the stores were open until 9 o'clock. That's no longer the case. Saturdays, it, it's dead here now. Uh, instead of being a Saturday town, it's a Friday night, Friday town. But Howard Maudlin is trying to change that. He's in charge of revitalization. You don't like to see old things go, but they have to be kept in good condition. Most of the buildings are in good condition, they just need to be dressed up a little. In the meantime, some townspeople say whatever is revitalized, they'd better hurry up. Already there's talk of a shopping mall planned on the outskirts of town. That could take away even more from downtown. Now joining us to discuss some of the economic issues facing Greensburg is Mayor Sheldon Smith. I, I want to explore that uh, revitalization a little bit. Uh, what are some of your initial plans? Well, we'd like to revitalize this downtown here in Greensburg. Sure. It would be a more attractive place to, to live. Also, it would be an attraction to new residents, new businesses, and industry. There's talk of that uh, shopping mall that they want to 
somebody wants to build on the outskirts of town. How does that fit into the plan? Does that take away from the downtown? Well, it would take away from the town, downtown some, maybe. But on the other hand, uh, we welcome new business here in Greensburg yeah. because it definitely helps the economy of our community. Can you balance that? Can you balance a shopping mall like that in, oh, in the downtown? I, I would think so. I would think so. Okay. Mayor, do you think most people are still attracted to the city that they want to come downtown anyway? You're not worried about that at all? Well, I, I think if we can revitalize the downtown to make it more attractive, naturally I, I think more people would be interested in establishing business on the square. You know, when I was walking around, I, you're revitalizing a theater over there. What's the name of that theater? That seems like a real... The old KFP Theater. Is that what it is? I'm in hopes that uh, that can be the step, second step in our revitalization program. Because that, uh, it's not only a historical building, but it, it will certainly attract people to our downtown area. I would think so, with a, yeah. a great deal of culture. Yeah. You know, this used to be a big railroad town, uh, but not so long ago you lost your passenger service. Well, of course, we hate to lose our passenger service, but in the last uh, few months now, we do have the, the track back in operation. And there is a few uh, cars coming through here. Freight cars, though. Freight cars. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too bad we lost the station, but it's that old saying, a half bun is worth better than no bun at all. That's right. Okay. So, so we move forward. We move forward. All right. Well, Mayor, uh, congratulations on, on, the, on the progress and revitalization. Well, we, we certainly want to thank uh, Channel 13 for making live at 5 here in Greensburg. I think it's one of our highlights. Huh. Uh, during our festival. Well, it's our we, pleasure we to be here. Want to thank it all. is our pleasure to be here. We like to explore communities and, okay. and, and come in and see what you guys are up to. Thanks okay, so much. Sheldon Smith, thanks yeah. so much for being thank our you. guest live at five. Mayor, nice thanks to meet so you. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. How about this one? Well, things are finally looking up for a Decatur County Memorial Hospital. You see, after a year of financial woes, the hospital is operating in the black again. A part of the hospital's troubles were blamed on outside competition on a new medical clinic in Greensburg. But both hospital and clinic officials say they now have a very good working relationship. I don't think we have caused any problem. In fact, we might have helped them because we have uh, patients that are going out of town that are staying here now in the community because of this specialist coming here. I think we have both taken on the the attitude at this point that we're, we have an interdependence. It's important for us to work together and we intend to go ahead and do that. Both say without each other, they would lose patients to other county hospitals. Bill? Coming up next, how's the weekend weather shaping up? There have been naysayers, but it sure is beautiful now. We'll ask Bob Gregory about it next. Plus, you'll meet the Decatur, Decatur County weather watcher, that is. He's right here from Greensburg, Indiana, with news for Batesville and Westport and all of central Indiana. This is News Center 13, live at 5. Gregory now in another part of the square. He's over there with a whole crowd around him. Let's find out if the nice weather will last. Bob? Oh, they say, you know, the theme of this is this country is our country, and uh, what more is a country when you have uh, a lot of youths around? We'll say that very slowly. These kids came down here now. They didn't realize they're going to have to go back to school tonight to make up an extra hour and a half, but they don't mind at all, right? Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. We, uh, boy, they're really making us feel uh, at home here. Magnificent sunshine here. I wish you could say it was the same all over the state. That's not the case. We'll take a look at what's going on where there are some heavy thunderstorms in Indiana. We'll do that in a moment. But football games tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Let's travel up to West Watcher from Decatur County here. This is Teresa uh, Bradywater, and you've been in Decatur County for a bunch of years, yes, right? I have. Now, you tell me you like to predict winter weather by doing what? Watching the woolly worms. And what are they telling you so far? So far, they're all light color, so that's supposed to be not very much bad weather. You know we're taping this, Teresa. Yeah, I we'll, know that. We'll play this back in the middle of February. <laughs> you tell me about it. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you what. You talk about mild weather, and I'll, I'll let you know what I think in the okay. snow department a bit later on. Okay. okay. Yeah. We have for you, since it's going to be mild for a while, one of our Weather Watcher t-shirts here, and okay. we hope you can do that while you're keeping track of the woolly okay. worms. I will. Teresa, thanks for your help <laughs> yes. down here in Decatur County, yes. okay? Yes, thank Kids, you. thank you for being here, and good luck in tonight's football game, huh? Yeah. All right. Take that, Mr. Gephardt. Okay, Bob. You know, you really pinned them down. I'll tell you what. We're going to start taping you. Still to come, you'll learn why the town taped its county tours. Plus, we'll introduce you to a business where quality counts more than quantity. With news for Milhausen and Osgood and all of central Indiana, this is News Center 13, live at 5.
Welcome back now to Live at Five. On the road, we're in Greensburg, and this is the ninth year for the Tree City Fall Festival. It's a special feature added this year, a special feature that is the county tours. Festival officials decided to honor the occasion by videotaping many locations on the tours. And Joel, touring Decatur County here at Union Bank. One point of interest shown here is the center of population marker. It was erected in 1890 by the Chicago Herald. At the time, this spot, just 10 miles south of Greensburg, was the center of population in the United States. The tours have been a popular attraction, and we're told they're likely to become a regular part of the festival. Linda? Well, Bill, you know that Greensburg makes itself felt in Indianapolis every day. You've seen the horse-drawn carriages in downtown Indianapolis that haul tourists around every night. Well, you may not know that some of those are made right here in Greensburg. News Center 13's David McNally has more. You'll see them by night on the streets of Indianapolis. You'll hear the hoofbeats and the rubber-topped wooden wheels as they pound pavements in New York, Walt Disney World, Colonial Virginia. But there's a different sound in the air here just outside Greensburg. This is where many of those wooden buggies are made, at Noah Koblenz Tree City Buggy Factory. Noah is Amish and asked not to appear on camera, but his neighbor, Bill Byard, says Noah started the business six years ago. He told me that he loved buggies from the word go, and that's the reason he got into it. The factory turns out 25 carriages a year, most on this popular vis-a-vis -vis design. But a big part of the business is repairing old carriages for collectors, like this early 1900 Kentucky school hack, the kind Bill Baird once rode in. On the right there, mostly there only, was a little stove, and uh, they'd have that fire built early in the morning before they started their school route, you know, and they'd have a bucket full of coal there. Others need fixing, too, like this 80-year-old gentleman's carrot. He'll, he'll, he'll strip the paint all off, is the first thing, and sand it and renew any broken parts or splintered parts. Noah does everything here in his shop, from mounting the spokes onto the finished wheels, to putting on the rubber tires, to repairing the suspension systems. And because the Amish don't use electricity, it's all done with compressed air-powered tools. Well, the fact that he's uh, such a young man to have a business of this uh, size of his own and, and master the whole craft of, uh, from A to Z in buggy making is unique to me. David McAnally, New Center 13. Coming up next, live at five from Greensburg Sports with Daryl Burnett. He'll talk to the former Mr. Basketball. Plus, he'll be joined live by the South Decatur County football coach. Live at five on the road. We'll be right back. Daryl Burnett joins us now live, and I understand that uh, with all the sports, Indiana's former export is back. Right, by way of Peru and Kentucky and Phoenix and Chicago, Kyle Macy is finally back in Indiana. After changing guards more than Buckingham Palace, the Pacers finally have a consistent point guard. Kyle Macy won't dazzle you at dribbling exhibitions or slam dunks. What he does is bring the ball up the court consistently and give a sense of leadership to a team. He's also looking to bring points. I think that's one reason I am excited about coming here, because I think I will be give, given an opportunity to do some things that I feel like I'm capable of doing. You know, last year in Chicago, um, they were happy, I, you know, talking to them at the end of the year, they said that I had done everything they asked me, but, you know, it was just like I really wasn't asked to do all that. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to being able to do some what he does best is lead. Macy has a string of six straight playoff appearances. Macy came cheaper than Jim ever did. After all, the Rams surrendered just to get the rights to talk to Jim. The only thing that could pry him loose from the Rams right now might be an even-up trade with General Motors. Everett walked into a good situation in Los Angeles. Only the situation he thought he would walk into was on the other side of town with the Raiders. Well, did you know the Rams were putting a deal together? I heard rumors about everything, and uh, Marvin Demoff, my agent, tried to keep me posted, but basically heard about it about last night, about 12 o'clock, and uh, I was really excited about that. True, Jim hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in the pros, but check the stats. Steve Bartkowski hasn't thrown a touchdown pass this year either, and he's played two more games than Jim has. How do you feel about the situation, Steve? I've got Indianapolis on my mind right now. You know, I, I uh, am anxious for him to get here. You know, I, I have a lot that I think I can offer a young guy as far as uh, wisdom and and having the opportunity to have lined up a bunch of times. I uh, I think I can help him develop too. 
Another quarterback is developing in Everett's absence at Purdue. Jeff George hit 23 of 40 passes in his debut performance against Ball State. Safe to say he won't be sneaking up on Pittsburgh. I think we can handle him. I'm not saying that cocky. I just think that if we play how we're capable of playing, well, you know, we can control him. What the Hoosiers have to control is the ball. Spud Washington and Damon Swayze did the bulk of the work against Louisville. They had to play well again to keep the ball away from Navy's Chuck Smith. To, uh, stiffen up a bit on the uh, running game because, again, they've got a fine back, and, uh, of course, they had a great one last year, and, of course, they're going to come in here and, and feature him. So we'll have to do a good job of trying to keep him well contained. Here in Decatur County, Ken Wendling, South Dakota Cougars are home tonight facing Beach Grove number eight in the Class 2A poll. Another tough game for you, but Ken, what I want to talk about is your rebuilding program here. You build a program and a winner in Brown County. Are you doing the same type things here at South Decatur? Yes, Darrell, we're trying to do the same type things. Uh, we have a little different problems here in, the, in our opponents. Our opponents are much bigger than we are out of the eight schools that we play. Eight of them, or five of them are bigger than we are. One thing we have to do is work on our scheduling and get it down to where we can handle some of the, our opponents. Well, you had more guys out this year than they've had in many years. What did you do to get the kids to come out for football? Well, we did a lot of talking, walking up down the halls, encouraging kids to come out and play football, give it a try. We made deals with them, come out for two weeks. If you don't like it, hang it up. Uh, conse consequently, they come out, they find out they enjoy it, and they stay with us. When you face the bigger schools like you will tonight and the better schools in this instance while you're rebuilding, how do you attack the game? How do you go into it? Well, we prepare like we can play them, and we uh, just go at it like it's another team, and uh, we give them the best shot we can. Do you have a program set up five years like many coaches pick? In our case down here, we did set up a five-year program when I first came in, and uh, this is the fourth. We have one more year, and hopefully next year we'll have more numbers than ever. Ken, best of luck tonight, and Thank hope you, you get that much. first win on the board. Thank you. Ken Wendling, the South Decatur coach. Let's talk a little fight right now. Tomorrow night, Marvin Johnson has a fight on his hands defending his light heavyweight title against Jean-Marie and Mebby. Plenty of tickets are still available for that fight. It should be a good one at Market Square, and we'll be there for that one. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Daryl. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all sitting on the courthouse square now. There are a number of monuments around here, and I wanted to point out just behind us here, if you can see, there uh, are some recent monuments put up. There's a Civil War with, a, with American flags on a World War II, uh, a World War I, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. That, I believe, is the just a recent thing uh, here on at the courthouse. Now, when we return, you'll see a tool lover's delight, the but, Whipple Collection. But first, we'd also like to thank the Greensburg Silhouettes and Shadow Swing Choir for entertaining us. Let's see if we can hear them one more time.